card, the address. So I'm basically saying the call type is uh, PBX, which refers to the extensions. Uh, which extensions? I could specifically say extension 100, or I could just put a, uh, a wildcard and say basically any extension in the office. So what will happen is uh, anytime an extension in the office calls this extension 103, I can enable maybe a, uh, a distinctive ringing pattern uh, that would be different than when uh, anybody else calls the office or to this extension, maybe from outside the office. Uh, I could also enable maybe a uh, maybe from a phone number, maybe a particular phone number. So maybe this is a a spouse or somebody important. Um, you can have you know their caller ID defined here so that they get a whole nother list of uh, features and options maybe they do um, a call for no answer out to your cell phone whereas anybody else that calls to your extension from outside the office they would uh, go to voicemail after a uh, no answer condition or maybe that you know it does a find me follow me you can have so so that you can have certain features applicable just to uh, certain caller IDs, all right? And to change which options are available, let's take a look at those. I can just click on this other address, or I can click on any one of these particular features. So I'll start with the other address. Start at the top of the list, uh, hide caller information. This is uh, basically block your caller ID whenever you place an outbound call. If that's enabled, it would not uh, show the uh, the caller ID of your um, when on it would just show anonymous on your outbound calls. Incoming call blocking if it's enabled, um, it's going to block all incoming calls. Remember, it's it can be based on certain phone numbers, and you can send a message to that party that uh, it's you know it can you can have your own personal greeting message or maybe just a general message. I can also block outbound calls to that particular phone number as well, and um, you know you're you're not allowed to make calls to this number, say for example. And it does again, it doesn't have to be to a specific number. It could be to uh, um, a, a, like a 900 number or something like that. So you can have a, uh, in there. You can have 900 star for the pattern. All right, distinctive ringing. So incoming call to this extension. Maybe this is the general uh, extension, uh, sales extension for the office. I can put a, enable distinctive ringing so I can tag it as sales and I can play a distinctive uh, ringing pattern. So anytime I get a call coming in, for the sales extension, it rings uh, extension 103, and I can maybe have have it ring several phones. Call hunting. All right, so you've got uh, call hunting. The way it works is uh, when it's enabled, you need to, uh, and I'm not enabling these every time I look at these features, but anytime you press enable, the save button on all of our pages it's always at the very bottom okay sometimes it's if you have a long list of extensions but uh, you might have to scroll down but it's always at the bottom so your your settings they never get changed until uh, updated till you press save so don't forget to do that um, so call hunting the way it works is I get an incoming call to this extension 103 but I'm not going to ring extension 103 with call hunting enabled I might want to ring extension 100 do so for a duration of 15 seconds, then ring extension 102, and uh, if they don't answer, have it in circular mode so that it will continue to uh, go round and round until uh, the time's out after 40 seconds. Mini extension ringing. So the way this works, and uh, people get a little bit confused by it, but you just need to, this is like a, a ring all group, okay? It's, we refer to it as mini extension ringing or MER. All right, all you do is just define which extensions, remember you got an incoming call, extension 103, and I'm going to ring um, maybe extension 100, 
maybe I want to also ring uh, extension 104, 105. If you're going to add these other extensions, you, it's two parts. You need to enable those extensions with this enable disable checkbox. Okay, as soon as I enable those, um, it brings it to the top of the table because I've sorted these over here in the top right hand corner. I've sorted these by the uh, the ones that are enabled. Okay, so I've got an incoming call and it's going to ring extension 103, uh, 100, 104, 105. You notice I've also included this extension itself in the ring group. And that way I, I'm ensured that all incoming calls, if they don't get answered, they're going to end up in the voicemail box of this extension 103. Okay, now that I've enabled those extensions, now I can enable the feature or service itself and press save down here at the bottom. Okay, and uh, so that would enable that mini extension ringing. All right, the next four are different flavors of, uh, of call forwarding. Okay, so I've got uh, unconditional call forward, which is uh, all calls. It'll forward all calls there coming to this extension. And I can put the destination number. I can update that unconditional call forwarding from my phone by dialing the feature code star four. And, um, and I can update the, uh, I can turn it on, turn it off, put that star four. I can also update the, uh, also update the, the number that's going to be forwarded to. All right. Um, They've got the busy call forwarding, no answer call forwarding in the case of a no answer condition. Where is that call going to be forwarded to? Unregistered uh, call forwarding. So if the phone, for some reason, is no longer registered, um, you can forward that call to some other office phone in the office that is working. The next one is uh, find me, follow me. And this uh, requires some explanation. Okay, it's a real popular feature. A lot of people really like this feature, but uh, you need to use it to um, understand how it works. So let's go through it in detail. I've already configured a few entries here. So um, uh, let's take a look at these, excuse me. All right, that's better. Um, so. So I've created a few entries here. First entry is going to ring to extension 100. Okay, and it's going to ring, begin ringing that extension after 10 seconds has passed. So it doesn't ring extension 100 immediately. I, I can put a delay on it. And how long of a delay? I, I define it here. Uh, and then how long is it going to ring the extension? And are, am I going to ask for a confirmation code? So I can do an edit on this extension to show you the settings. You can define if it's going to an external number or whether it's going to go to a, a, an extension. How long of a delay you're going to wait. Uh, how long after it begins to ring, maybe you want to wait 10 seconds and then only give it uh, 10 seconds to answer, 15 seconds to answer, and then you want it to stop ringing. And then there's an option for a confirmation code, which I'll explain. Okay, here's an option, a uh, second entry to place a call externally to this uh, this phone number, 214-733-1234. I go out immediately, and, um, and then I ask for a confirmation passcode. Okay, so the way this uh, confirmation passcode works is the following. So you place a call out to the cell phone and let's think about the scenario that would normally happen if uh, let's say if that cell phone is uh, is powered off it's out of range or maybe it rings and the person rejects the call they're in a meeting they, they hit reject what would happen to that call okay you think about it and that call is normally going to go directly any incoming call to your 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 uh, cell phone that gets rejected, it's going to go to your cell, the voicemail box of your cell phone. Okay, so in this case, 
you've got a call to your extension at your office, you may not want that to go to your personal voicemail box on your cell phone. Okay, so for that reason, we asked for a confirmation passcode. And what code are you going to enter? Okay, the confirmation passcode in this case is something simple, 111. Uh, so that you get the, self, the call on your cell phone, you answer it, it prompts you, says, you know, please, you have a call, please enter the passcode, and then you press 111. At that point, you're able to speak with the, uh, the caller. And all the other phones, they stop ringing, and you're able to, to speak with the caller. All right, so that's the um, why we put that confirmation passcode in there. Is it in there for security purposes? That maybe it can serve a uh, little bit of security, um, but it's mainly to prevent it from going to voicemail. All right, and then uh, it's going to ring your local extension, which is your extension 103. You can set it to ring immediately or maybe put a delay on it. Um, maximum active calls. This could be important. Okay, so um, what this is is how many calls are allowed to go out and use this find me follow me feature simultaneously. Okay, so you think about this as a a nice feature, nice option, but it can be a little bit resource intensive uh, on the office, especially if they're dealing with uh, POTS lines or FXOs. Okay, let's say they only have they've got a QX200, they've got four FXO ports. You get an incoming call on one of those uh, FXOs, FXO number one. It goes to ring your extension. It goes to find me, follow me, rings out to your cell phone. Well, now you're tying up, especially if you answer the call, you're tying up uh, two FXO ports uh, for that particular call alone. And uh, they'll be tied up for the duration that, that the guy chooses to, uh, to speak. All right, as long as that call is active, those two ports will be tied up. Okay, so now what happens if he gets a second incoming call? Well, now he's going to be tying up all four FXO ports just so he can get his, uh, pers you know, his personal phone calls to his extension. So that's why the uh, we set the maximum active calls. You can, may want to set it to one. Uh, the second incoming call would go direct to voicemail. Okay, you get the um, the welcome message that's going to be played when you initially uh, for to the caller. Uh, you can put a delay on it, you know, maybe you just want to hear a ring back initially and then, um, or you can play a ring, uh, ring back tone during the delay. Typically you won't put the end delay at all and then it'll play this, uh, this initial welcome message. Please hold on while we try to contact your party, whatever you want to record, you can record your own greeting. And then um, after it plays that message and it's going to move on and it's going to play the next message, which could be silence. It could play our default music on hold. It could continue to play ringback tone. It could play a, a greeting. Uh, use one of the music RTP channels. Um, or you can use the audio line inject. So lots of options. Uh, you know, you can understand why, why it's a popular feature. All right, um, with that, let's go ahead and uh, dial and announce. Allows you to create an extension. Um, and then you can add uh, another, a whole other list of extensions that you're going to be calling. Every time you dial this extension 103, it's going to launch an outbound call to all the extensions that you have or outside numbers that you have listed here. And once the, uh, it calls to that extension, the person answers, it's going to play this announcement message. And uh, you can choose to play it maybe a couple times, maybe uh, with a five second delay in between each uh, play attempt. You can specify the ringing duration, how long it's going to ring before it plays the announcement, or how long you're going to wait, maybe the caller doesn't answer. So you can set a ring time.